Okay, here we go. All right, so this is outdoor cable, just regular OSP or outside plant cable. 48 strand single mode Altos cable with fast access technology. Now that's the key with this cable I'm about to demonstrate, fast access. If you can notice, there's a ridge right underneath the label and then a ridge on the opposite side in the back. If we look at it straight on, there's a ridge on this side and then a ridge on the opposite side. This makes it different than pretty much any other cable out there. Most cables have a rip cord. You uh, cut into it, get the rip cord, and then work your way down. This, it banana peels, but you gotta know what you're doing, otherwise it's way harder. So the easiest way to get started, find the seam. There's one right here. The seam on the opposite side. Just take your snips and cut right into it. Now take some needle nose pliers and start digging into it. Be careful that you don't stab your hand or Put too much pressure on it it doesn't take much you just want to get it in there and get it started and then peel it back like a sardine can get it just a little bit you don't want to go too far just want to get the peel started and you're going to damage the end of the cable that's not a big deal you're going to damage these fibers and cut them up but they're all going to be thrown away so don't worry too much about it all right. and then just start peeling it back you only need a little bit, just enough to get a grip on with your hands. Now, before you get started, this stuff peels so easily, you're gonna need something to make it stop. So let's measure this. Different applications have different measurements. So check what it is you're going to install it in and then measure it to that. If you're going to fusion splice it, sometimes they need 75 inches, sometimes 120 inches. If you're going to put it in a junction box or a termination box that'll have its own length or we'll just put it back here so just take your tape ring it around it just a couple times this is only to make it stop ripping because I'm going to show you how easy this thing is to strip run this around cut it and then also take your snips and make just a gouge you're not trying to cut into the cable you're just trying to make it a, a bend point and I'll show you why later just a nice even ring so there nothing's exposed it's just a deep gash in the cable that's a ring all the way around all right, so now we go back to the head of the cable grab a hold of this and just pull them apart that's it pull it away from each other pull 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 all right now we're getting close to the tape pull 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 now stop there we go we can't go any further because of that tape i'm pulling nothing happens but now because of that nick that i made that ring i made around it it's already starting to come loose so sometimes you can just pull it like that but not quite but it makes it much easier to cut off this is just trash now, these pieces. We're gonna get rid of these. Now we need to get rid of all of this, all of this yarn, all this ribbon. Now because this is a 48 strand cable, we've got four tubes in here. Each of them have 12 strands in it. But if you look, there's more than four tubes. Here's the tip. We've got blue, orange, green, brown, and then these two are blanks, black and black. So this diameter cable could hold two more tubes before the diameter has to get any larger. If you got a 12 strand cable, it would be blue, black, 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 black. Now be careful because if you do get a big enough cable, it would be blue, orange, green, brown, slate, white, red, and then there is an actual black tube. But you can see the fibers, these are kind of hollow, and this is solid. Solid all the way through so now we go back up to here to the neck be careful that you're not working on any of the active colors these are just blank tubes right here all we're trying to do is get all of this off this is all trash now all right we're just going to cut this off we're just going to go right down these blanks if you have a seam ripper that works best like a sewing seam ripper you can use a knife anything like that just be careful not to damage your actual colors with the fibers on it. Once you get all of them cut, it starts to slide like that. It does start to bind up and grab, so sometimes you have to work it a little bit, shake it around to loosen it up. Sometimes you can do this in sections, start towards the end, whatever works for you. You just got to get all of this trash off. This fiber does not have any of that water blocking gel. What it has is a powder, and when that powder gets wet, then it turns into a gel, 
and keeps the water from freezing and breaking the fiber. So this cable has been outside for a long time. It's old, it's just scrap for this demonstration. So it is pretty slimy. Most of the time you won't experience this unless it's been in water or it's been outside for a long time or something like that. But any new installation, you'll maybe have a little bit of slime on the end or nothing at all. Now this is bunched up too tight. I can't pull this off anymore. I can't keep pushing it. So at this point, what's easier to do is to pull your blanks back, get the blanks out of there. Now that freed up a little bit of space and now it comes off. This is just trash now. I had to do this in sections. So now here's the first piece. Let's see if I can push this off. Yep, there it goes. But it will bunch up at the end now. More trash. Okay, now these blanks, these two blanks, we can completely remove them. If you'll notice, these corkscrew around and then they stop and then they corkscrew back the other way. Here it's happening here. It's corkscrewing one direction, stops, and now it's twisting and corkscrewing back the other direction. They call that a switch back. And that's basically to give the cable a little bit of room like if it's being suspended from a wire, it can stretch and compress a little bit and stretch and compress. And that gives it a joint to do that. So you can also use that to your advantage for when you're taking it apart. Cause now you can use this and peel it out the middle and you can remove them with half the effort. You can see the switchback almost started again or it did, but you can almost see it here, right, right at the neck of the cable. This garbage here and these blanks, we're gonna cut it completely and cleanly off. These blanks are now trash and throw those away. All of this, get it as clean as you can. If you wanna put heat shrink on these just to make it look a little nicer, this is the time to do it. When all these are still bundled together and you've got it right here, you put a little piece of heat shrink on here, shrink it down, it makes it look real nice. It doesn't make any practical difference though. It's just for looks. Now we're gonna run our cable through the grommet for this box. We're gonna do two things. We're gonna take this rubber grommet out and cut just a small hole in it. Not much at all. Now we take our fiber, and push it through. Like a baby rhino, get that pushed all the way on there. You can go a little bit too far. We'll adjust this later. Now we'll take this, run it through that hole. And this is also just for measurements. All right, we're gonna run this up. I'm gonna get it about in this area. This is where your tie wraps are gonna hold on to it. And you're also, run this up to here, get a measurement on your strength member. Looks like right about here, just to the top of this plate, right about there. Okay, now we can remove the whole thing and makes it much easier to work on. We can either slide it back out the bottom of the box or if there's enough slack, you can pull a lot through the box and work on it out here. Let's take it back through. All right, now that we have that measurement, now we can go ahead and free up all of these fibers. And we're just gonna twist them and get them all loose and get them off of this white stick. This is the strength member. This is just a fiberglass rod. There's one last string that's just wrapped around the strength member. We'll get that at the end. All right, now we got these all free and loose. We're gonna cut this here. You can use your snips or your clines or whatever you have handy. My needle nose pliers I have a cutter in there. Now that's fiberglass, so any of the dust that comes out is gonna make you itch real bad. All right, this is just trash. You can throw it away. But again, be careful, because that's fiberglass and it'll make you itch if the powder gets on you. I'm gonna set this back up like it was on the wall. Take this through the bottom of the box all the way up. Now, if you have any ability to twist this cable, you wanna twist it where your fibers are not pushed up against the back. Because right now, if we bind this down, and push it against the back wall, it's gonna push against these tubes and push against these colors. So let's see if we can twist and roll this cable, see if we got any, any play or any room. There we go, that's much better. This little piece is to hold the strength member down. Not all of these boxes have this. They've all got their own different version of hardware. We're gonna put this on here. And this little lock neck goes right on this stud. All right, let's tighten this down. Okay, got that. And then for a little extra, we're gonna put some tie wraps in there. They gave us these little ones. Let's see. This is just for a little bit extra. Okay. Now, since we're only doing 12 for this demonstration, we're just going to peel out the blue out of this bundle. We're just gonna start unraveling the blue. All right, now the blue is separated. Gotta keep them separated. Hey. And the rest of these colors, we can roll the other colors up and get them out of our way for now. We're just gonna put them in this 
slack loop right here. And we're just going to use a tie wrap to hold them down for now so they don't spring out. There we go. So now we need to fan this out. We need to put the fan out tube, the buffer tube on it. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions, but this should get you started.